what uh, uh, the, the challenges. And we, I, I hope therefore that the department uh, is ready. We also requested the, the chair of the commission because he thought that it would be important that he, he or she be around. We requested the, we requested the, the, the department to, 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 to arrange that for us. I will hear from them what then is the, is the, is the situation. We will, before we then allow either, I think it's the, the, the TM or the minister to shortly uh, uh, give us a, a political brief. We will then uh, allow Mr. Sakasa to take us through the roll call. And, and, and uh, uh, members, okay, guests that are here, will request them to, 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 to identify themselves as they, as they usually do. Virtual meetings have not changed anything. We are still in a committee. Uh, Mr. Sakaza, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Good morning to Chair, to the committee and to the DM and the department at large. Chair, uh, we have Mr. today uh, from the portfolio committee, we have yourself, Chair. We've got uh, Honorable Ndabe, Honorable Ngabani, Honorable Zuma, Honorable Begram, Honorable Kado, Honorable Yinana, Honorable uh, Mkondo, and Honorable Benef. That's from the Portfolio Committee Chair. And then from the uh, Support Staff Chair, I've got myself, uh, Boshia, uh, the Committee Assistant, Boshia Ntabeni, and uh, the content advisor and Mr. Ebuko Mukwena, the researcher. Thank you, Chair. I also received uh, an, an apology from the minister who is attending another meeting at this point, but the game is yet. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Sakaza. Do we have any, any guests that they should uh, that introduce themselves? Morning, Chair. Um, I'm Adrian van der Waal. I'm the chair, chairperson of the National Minimum Wage Commission, and I'm here, so I'll I'll make the short presentation, and then um, um, then because him Kalipi and I, then because from the department will then then answer answer your questions. All right. Uh, who's who's here? Who's Elisa? Elisa from. Good morning. I am Elisa Duku from PMG Parliamentary what? Monitor. Why should I have to call you when you know that we're supposed to be doing that? I'm sorry. Having okay. said, have, having said that, uh, GM, if you have some uh, short political input on the matter, and then we allow the. Uh, is the, or the DG is here to just take us through who is here. Or let's let's allow the DG to just take us through who is here from the department. DG. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Good morning, Honorable Chairperson and the Honorable Members. Um, the Chairperson of the National Minimum Wage Commission has just introduced himself. Um, Professor Van der Waalt. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Temugosim Kalipi. Um, we have uh, Tando Wababa, who's the PLO. Um, Zandi from Zandi Mueli from the DM's office. Karabo Mahakhane from the DM's office. And Weli Lekwengu from my office, uh, Chair. We are led by the Deputy Minister this morning. Thank you, Chair. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you very much, DJ. Uh, 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 we we will then we will then give the the DM just a, a overview on the matter, 
and then we we hand over to the to the to the department who starts. I hear the, the, the chairperson of the commission is here. Then she will he will he will do that, and then who then makes a presentation will be dependent on you, DM. Well, um, there's a there's a problem with your connection. Am I not audible enough? You 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 the you, person. You, you are yes. There, there's something you're not audible. Uh, GM. Can Mr. Yinana switch off yeah. his, uh, his mic and his uh, and his uh, video, please? GM. Oh, she's gone. She's gone. Okay, back. GM. Okay. Are you able to hear me now? Yes, we're able to hear you. Your mic is muted. Sorry? Can yeah. you unmute your mic? Okay. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. So I'm standing up actually just to get uh, to, to get uh, some sort of... Um, a network, uh, but I was acknowledging protocol, um, uh, uh, honorable chairperson, uh, acknowledging also the presence of the chairperson of the national minimum wage, Professor Van der Waals, amongst us, uh, our guests, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me greet you this morning once more. I'm sure, honorable chairperson and members, you might have uh, heard on the news uh, this morning. Um, that um, the UK Supreme Court uh, judgment directing the Uber drivers that they must be classified as employees and not as independent contractors. So I'm sure you would understand how this will have far reaching implications uh, uh, for our country and for our country, like all other countries all over the world facing class action in this regard and the implications of the UK Supreme Court. Uh, will be burdensome on our Labor Relations Act, uh, basic conditions of employment, and the national minimum wage itself. So I think at some point we must have a, 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 a thought, we must sit down and as a portfolio committee begin to study this judgment and familiarize ourselves with its content so that should it happen that uh, we are affected, uh, mm -hmm. we will be ready for such a, a eventuality. I know. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Um, no, no, I was saying, honorable members, rest assured uh, that the implications of this judgment will be very devastating for our country and, 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 and the, with the depleted resources uh, that we, 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 we have. Uh, and all eyes are on the Minister of Finance today and our, hope, our hopes and wishes are on the balanced and well navigated budget speech in times of crisis. So I'm sure we are all abreast with the fact that the CCMA is estimated uh, that 72% uh, of the labor force uh, in South Africa falls under its jurisdiction and the remaining 28% of the workforce within the courts. So this figure demonstrates the vulnerability in the South African labor market and its indication of, of the huge responsibility carried by the CCMA compared to our or maybe, uh, honorable members, when the time is right, uh, especially in the pandemic, uh, society, when it destroys jobs, we must consider the impact of Section 189 and 189A on small scale retrenchments. I'm aware that small retrenchments are allowed in terms of our legislation. 
without necessarily having to invoke section 189 and 189A. But unfortunately, for some families, this is all they need to survive for a country that is building jobs. Our legislation is bound to protect every form of job. So the promulgation of the National Minimum Wage Act, which came into effect, effect in January 2019, was meant to intervene in the wage inequalities and disparities, uh, especially in the vulnerable sector. So we have made uh, significant progress in this area since the, the nine, uh, 2019 promotion, although some changes uh, of high wage violations still exist. So the national minimum wage is a responsibility to citizen workers, employers, not a function that must be left to government alone. Without having to with some compliance to the national minimum wage act in other states. Surely, we don't have to consider the fines or worry about the number of inspectors and our capacity to enforce and to comply. If all of us, uh, we are to take responsibility and become patriotic. So let us uh, just be patriotic citizens and make the work of the commission easier by appreciating those who make our lives easier and make and take care of our households and do good by them. So after all, it's, uh, it's true. Your connectivity, TM, is very bad. Am I still not audible, Chair? Uh, if it, I think if you, you can try and wrap up, it is, it, it cuts, it keeps on being in, 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 in a challenge. Uh, I think I need to take this opportunity to thank you, Chair. Um, uh, for this opportunity, but I'm saying I was saying that uh, the increase is too little. But uh, uh, there are many other employers who are complaining about that increase that is supposed to be affected uh, uh, as, as per the minister's uh, 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 instruction. So some of us give this money to car guards, and and but we complain and we lodge disputes and we criticize government when we should be taking care of those who look after our families and this has the at some point it has to change honorable members so i think uh, 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 we shouldn't be spiteful with the national minimum wage adjustments we, we must protect the workers while keeping the employers in productive business what is also more important honorable members is that we make provision in our legislation for the distressed employers to apply for, for exemption should they so wish. Let me thank you, Chairperson and Honorable Members for this opportunity. And then um, uh, I'm sure Honorable Chair, through you, the DG and his team will take us through the presentation. I thank you. Uh, thank you very much, DM. Thank you, thank you very much. Can we, uh, Chairperson of the, of the Commission, we will then hand over to you and then and then we'll then give for you to make some, some remarks because it's the first time that you are in this admin it, it, to be to be in to be invited in our committee. I'll hand over to you, Prof. Um good good morning, ma'am. Um, um so I um I just want to address sorry, you. Sorry, sorry for that. Because it's the first time, is it possible for you to for us to see your face? Yes, sure. It's not a very great one. Is that, can you see me? We see half of your, okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Honorable Deputy Minister Malloy, um, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members of the Committee, um, the Director General of the Department of Employment and Labor, all the other staff members and managers from the department, staff members from the Portfolio Committee and guests, um, thank you for inviting me with the with the department to address you on the on the national minimum wage commission it's true you um we have been appointed or we were appointed from the beginning of 2019 but i've not had the the, the pleasure of of addressing you since then so it's a first for me um what i will do is i will present a, a, a make a short powerpoint presentation 
And then from there, um, we will field um, questions or comments from the, from the members of the committee. And uh, of course, the department, especially Mr. Demigorsi Galipi, who works very closely with the National Minimum Wage Commission, will also be part of the, of the discussion as well as the, as the DG and, and other staff members. So if you just give me time, I'll upload the, the presentation. Can I check if you were you were queuing this thing of 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 this uh, systems? I don't know whether you were given the rights to be. Can people who who know how to to yeah, assist? You, you had the yeah. It was sent. I see with the invitation. The the presentation was sent to you. So if somebody else from 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 your committee or the secretariat could upload it, I, I struggled to get it up. Um, Chair, through you, Chair, uh, Mr. Wedi Lengu is the one who has been given the right to, to fly today. I, I'm sure he's busy with it. Okay, thank you. So I don't have to try. Yeah, so I, I really don't have the, 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 the access to do it. All right, Prof. Are you able to see it? No, it's just small. I, I struggle to get it on, on to, to share it with you. No, it has been shared. To, to okay, us. there. Yeah. Is that, can you say, so you can see it, is it? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Then I'll, I'll, I'll start. Um, the national minimum wage legislation was a proclaimed bill promulgated in 2018 and came into effect of January 2019. You will all remember that, that before that is, there was quite a history of moving from the sectoral determination system where minimum wages were, were established for different vulnerable sectors to a national minimum wage. It took, took a number of years. Um, of negotiation at NEDLAC, and then um, Deputy President Ramaphosa was was um, running the this this program to to get a national minimum wage um, in place for South Africa, and then eventually it was on the first of January 2019 it took effect. So it it sets a historic historic precedent for the protection of low earning vulnerable workers and provides a platform for reducing inequality and the huge disparities in income in the labour market based on one national minimum wage. So prior to the promulgation of the national minimum wage, wages were set by a sector basis through bargaining council agreements negotiated between trade unions and, and employers and sectoral determinations, which was, which was the system. Um, so when the national minimum wage then took effect, there were nine sectoral determinations which set minimum wages and, and other basic conditions for um, certain sectors. So it was for, arranged from contract cleaning, learnership, domestic sector, wholesale and retail, children in the performance of advertising, artistic and cultural activities, the taxi sector, forestry, se forestry sector, farm sector, hospitality sector, and, and, and others. The, <clears throat> what has happened with the promulgation um, of the national minimum wage these um, sectoral determinations remained part of the law as schedules to the Basic Conditions of em Employment Act, because they also contain other conditions of employment um, and, and therefore are still in force in as, in as much as the a sectoral determination um, provides for wages, minimum wages that are higher than the um, the national minimum wage, when there is an increase, like there would be an increase now on the 1st of March, 
um, that percentage increase is then also given to the different sectors based on, on the sectoral minimum wage, in as much as I indicated that wage is higher than the, than the national minimum wage. So, well, from a policy perspective, then it was decided that although we had the system of sectoral determinations for a long period, um, there were still high wage violations. And one of the causes was that there was a complexity in wage levels, you can understand. So a single minimum wage is preferred by uh, minimum wage experts in the ILO because it covers all workers, benefits all workers equally. It is easier to enforce and it enjoys a higher compliance generally. And it can, can be set to serve a broad, broader policy objective such as the reduction of poverty and inequality um, nationwide and not only sector sector by sector because with the sectoral determinations there were sectors that in a sense fell between the cra the cracks like the the sector that provided for for caregivers for instance um, there was no never a sectoral determination um, promulgated for for them and there was therefore no minimum wage in that sector so as I indicated they remain in place because they regulate other conditions of employment peculiar to the particular sector and different what, from what the BCA regulates, because everybody is covered by, all employees are covered by the BCA. Um, Section 51.3 3 of the BCA also provides that any sectoral determination um, that will higher, as I indicated, will be increased with the percentage increase that the national minimum wage um, will be increased by. So presently it's the contract cleaning sector, and the wholesale and retail sectors minimum wages are higher than the minimum wage are higher than the national minimum wage as a result of the of the two um, sectoral determination still operating in that specific in those specific sectors. Thank you. You can move on. Um, so perhaps just before I look at the annual review of the national minimum wage, I can take you. It's not on a slide, but I can tell you what the functions of the national minimum commission national minimum wage commission are, um, or even before that to say who, how it is constituted, I, I trust you know, or most of you would know, um, the national minimum wage is a commission that's appointed by the Minister um, of Employment and Labour. Um, he um, appointed me as a, as a chairperson, and then there are three other expert um, commissioners that's appointed by the Minister as well. So they are experts in in economics, law, basic conditions of, of, of employment. Um, they, at the moment, all three of them come from, from um, University, University of Witwatersrand, is Professor Imlan Velodia, um, Dr. Sarah Mushitsu, and um, Niva um, uh, Machetla. They are the three experts that are appointed, were appointed by the minister. Then there are three uh, members nominated by by the organized labor. And then there are three uh, members um, nominated on the commission by, by Business South Africa. And then there are three, interestingly, three also then um, commissioners nominated um, by the community. So um, unlike the previous um, uh, commission, Employment Conditions Commission that looked after, the, looked after the sectoral determinations, the national minimum wage also includes a representation from, from community. Um, now, the functions of the National Minimum Wage Commission is this function to review the national minimum wage and recommend adjust, adjustments on an annual basis. So they must, uh, the commission must investigate and report annually to the minister on the impact of the national minimum wage in the economy, collective bargaining, and the reduction of income differentials, and make such information available to the public also investigate income differentials and recommend benchmarks for the for proportionate income differentials then the commission must set medium term targets for the national minimum wage within 3 years of the commencement of the act the national minimum wage act and advise the minister on measures to reduce income differentials or any other matter which the minister requests the commission's advice also advise the minister on sectoral determinations and on any matter concerning basic conditions of employment act, of, of, of basic conditions of employment. And then any other function that's required by the, by the, of the commission in terms of any other employment law. So, so the National Minimum Wage Commission's primary task is to, 
investigate the effect of the wage to monitor the effect and then to make recommendations for adjustments annually, but it also has other important tasks as I, as I indicated to you now. The adjustments or recommended adjustments um, to the national minimum wage should be made with regard to the evidence on the impact of the minimum wage on collective bargaining and the reduction of income differentials, as well as the prevailing situation in the labor market, the broader economy and in household poverty and inequality. All these factors must be considered. Soon after the commission was established, it contracted um, the DPRU of the University of Cape Town and the CSDA at the University of, of Johannesburg, two reputable um, research um, institutions to undertake a combination of quantitative and qualitative research regarding the impact of the introduction of the national minimum wage. So you can move on. Um, the first review, so that was in 2019, because of the, the processes, it of course took a few months before the the service providers could, could commence with the research. And by the time that uh, we had to recommend adjustments in 2020, the, the researchers had not, it was, it was not long enough period in any event. I mean, this impact, um, you can't see an impact of, of such a, uh, the introduction of the minimum wage within two or three months. Um, we had not had the outcome of the results. Um, and um, because it's based, the results also, be, the survey is based on the quarterly labor force survey data from stats. We arrange with stats that, that the data is, is made available um, um, per quarter and not annualized. Um, that's the most appropriate labor market data that is needed to assess the impact of the minimum wage and then to provide evidence-based advice. Um, because um, it was important when the National Minimum Wage Commission was established and it's um, in the negotiations at NEDAC leading up to the National Minimum Wage, that the minimum wage must base its uh, recommendations and, and decisions on, on, on evidence base. Um, and, and that is what we seek to do. So at the time then last year, because we didn't have the research results uh, available, we recommended to the minister to only increase, to increase the national minimum wage um, with a CPI uh, percentage increase. At the time it was 3.8%. So it moved from 20 rand, the initial minimum wage was 20 rand to 20 rand 76 in March last year, to 18 rand 68 for farm workers and to 15 rand 57 for domestic workers and then 11 rand 42 for workers employed under the expanded public, public works program respectively. So um, just on the farm workers and domestic workers, although we, we have a national minimum wage, um, at the time the national minimum wage of 20 rand, it was, was the first national minimum wage, um, the 1st of January, 20, 2019. Uh, was significantly higher than the minimum wages um, prescribed by the, the relevant sectoral determinations, the one for agriculture, one for forestry, and then one for, for domestic workers. So the, it was recommended then by the committee to um, Deputy President Ramaphosa at the time to, to um, phase the uh, or equalize the minimum wages of domestic workers and farm workers over time and to give that task to the National Minimum Wage Commission. That's, that is then within the act, there's, a, there's an imperative on the national minimum wage to, to recommend the equalization of the farm workers and, and the domestic workers. So um, we'll get to that, and that is what we've done now. So um, we, we also did that task. We had to do that task during the course of last year, which we did, and, and I'll come back to that. But now we come to the 2021 review, which we um, published towards the end of last year for public comment and then submitted it to the, to the minister in the beginning of January. So by then... We, in the end of September last year, we had the research outcomes from these in two institutions, and the findings were that there's not been any, near, there was really been no negative impact on employment as a result of the introduction of the national minimum wage. So it was a significant finding, so there was not um, unemployment caused by the 
introduction of the national minimum wage. The introduction of the national minimum wage led to a statistically significant increase in wages. Um, so statistically, it's noticed that there was an increase in wages overall in, in low paid wages, low pay employees, but it was smaller than expected. There was a smaller than expected improvement in wages for the workers covered, covered by the national minimum wage. But nevertheless, there was a statistically significant increase. There was also found that in agriculture, there was a broad, broad compliance with the national minimum wage, but in the domestic work sector, there were slightly lower, or there were lower levels of, of domestic, domestic work, um, of, of, of um, actually paying the, the prescribed minimum wage in the domestic work sector. Employees considered that the minimum wage for farm and domestic, domestic workers was, was too low. Several argued that it was unfair that the minimum wage in their sectors was lower than the, than the national minimum wage. Let's move on. Um, and ideally, the national minimum wage should be applicable to all employees. Okay, so that, that was then a summary, a very short summary of some of the most important findings of the, of the two research projects, which are available on the Department of Employment and Labor's website. To come back then to the equalization of the farm and domestic sectors, um, a national minimum wage um, should be applicable to all employees, but in order to avoid excessive disruptions at the, in 2019, we, the Act established lower minimums for farm and domestic sectors. Um, the tiered sy system was meant as a temporary measure to gradually phase, be phased out within two years of the promulgation of the national, national minimum wage. So the, um, the commission had to make recommendations within two years of the, of the promulgation of the minimum wage. So following that transitional phase, a majority of the commissioners recommended that the minimum wage for the agricultural sector be equalized with the national minimum wage, wage rate, uh, which has now gone, will go up to 21 grand 69, because the national minimum wage itself um, was a um, recommendation accepted by the minister was an increase of um, CPI, uh, plus 1,5 percent. So the the increase for all workers to the national minimum wage um, this year from the 1st of March will be a 4,5 percent increase, and the national minimum wage will then be 21 rand 69 rand per hour, <clears throat> and that will with the equalisation that same amount be the national minimum wage for farm workers. Remember, farm workers initially when the their minimum wage was 90 percent of the of the national minimum wage. Workers' wages were lower, so it was recommended and accepted by the minister that they'll be paid 88% um, of the national minimum wage for 2021. And then with the adjustment for 2022, that the domestic wage then also be equalized with, uh, with the national minimum wage. So then there will not be a differentiated rate um, from between domestic and farm workers. This is a table that illustrates that there's been, um, well, taking even CPI into consideration, there's been a significant increase uh, over the period um, from 20, 2003 to, to 2021 in the farm work sector and domestic work sector. So the farm workers are now equalized um, and the domestic worker sector will be equalized um, uh, in, in 2020, 2020, Thank you. You can move on. There was a minority submission. The, the commission, uh, um, in terms of its rules, um, seeks to reach consensus in its um, recommendations to the minister. Um, but unfortunately, um, last year, it was not possible to reach consensus. The three business representatives of the commission um, disagreed with the majority recommendation and recommended that the national minimum wage be increased by, by 3%, which is the, the um, CPI. And they further proposed a phase-in approach over a period of four years for the farm and domestic sectors with no um, additional increases for farm workers and domestic workers during the present year, particularly 
Uh, well, one of the main reasons, of course, was the fact that there was such significant unemployment as a result of the of the lockdown, and it was felt by the commissioners representing um, business that um, it is really not the correct time, it's inopportune time to to effect the the phasing in over. Uh, starting with the phasing in over this this year in 2021. Then um, the process is that our report and recommendations was published for comment, and there were a number of comments, 1,520 written submissions were received from stakeholders around the country, and the written submissions were divided. Of course, with some supporting the recommended adjustments and arguing for an above inflation increase, as well as an immediate equalization of domestic and farm worker sectors, and some was against the recommended adjustment and, and equalization. There were many um, individual employers um, that, um, that uh, um, um, made representations, um, particularly from the agricultural sector, indicating that the, the increase to the farm workers, the minimum wage of the farm workers is, is too significant and that may lead to, to unemployment. So, but before, so, so we had then submitted to the minister our report and then a report, uh, all the, all the uh, representations were submitted to the minister with the report. When we uh, actually considered the recommendations, we considered as per the National Minimum Wage Act, the cost of living, CPI, the need to retain the value of the national minimum wage, GDP, productivity, ability of employers to carry on their business successfully, operations of SPs, likely impact on employment and employment creation. The minister then also considered the following factors when he received the uh, the R report and all the comments, the majority and minority report. So they were in one report in majority and minority views and in the, the public views. And he considered legislative requirement to align minimum wages in the agricultural sector with a general national minimum wage. That was the intention from the start and the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on workers' wages, poverty and inequality, especially in informal workers and the the working poor, the low income earning workers. And the minister then accepted the recommendations and um, published, published the increases that will take effect on the 1st of March, 2021. Thank you. It is expected that some employers, particularly small employers, may face challenges as a result of the proposed increases that is shown. Um, there's been um, a farming grouping agri forum also on behalf of the farm workers um, sought to, to um, have a, a meeting with the minister. Um, they are not satisfied. They're unhappy with the, with the significant increase of the percentage increase of the farm workers. Um, but um, the National Minimum Wage Act makes provisions that the challenges to employers can be mitigated by using the exemption process that's provided for by the National Minimum Wage Act and its, and its regulation. So an employer who experiences distress or an employer organization acting on behalf of its members can apply for an exemption. Uh, well, they could have applied from the beginning, but the exemption um, from the 1st of March when this significant percentage increase is, is implemented. Um, so employers who cannot afford the payment of the national minimum wage can be exempt from paying it. It's a, it's a limited exemption. It's not a, it's an exemption where the, where the national minimum wage, if the, ex, the exemption application is successful, um, the national minimum wage can be decreased um, to 90% of the actual minimum wage. But in the instance of, of farm, farmers who are now, as employers who are faced with a significant increase, um, they are all entitled to be given, if they cannot afford the payment, to pay then 90% of the actual minimum wage. The, the exemption is operative for a period of a year. And if the farmer then cannot, cannot um, um, pay, still cannot pay at the end of the year, we'll have to make a, a new, new application. 
So employers are therefore advised to initiate the process by conducting consultations if there are trade unions or with affected employees and, and, and apply for an exemption. Perhaps just before I, I talk about the conclusion, I can just pause to, to refer to the um, expanded public works program workers. Their wage is in the schedule um, li limited to 11 Rand something. Um, it's, uh, it was initially just 11 Rand. And um, it is not the task, well, the act doesn't specifically give the task to the uh, national minimum wage, consider the minimum wages of, of these workers. There has been um, several um, representations from interested groups and parties um, that the minimum wage, the expanded public works program workers should also be increased, increased significantly. But as, as it stands, um, that has not been done because it's not a specific instruction to the, to the National Minimum Wage Commission. We'll have to um, obtain a, a request from the minister to investigate that particular, particular wage. And it's a peg at a certain level um, because of policy considerations. So then in conclusion, to reach consensus on wages and conditions of employment of vulnerable workers would be ideal for all the parties concerned, but if there's no consensus reached around these issues in the commission, the majority decision of the commission prevails. But having said that, the minority um, views with um, reasons also submitted to the minister for consideration. So in as much as the act allows for written comments around the proposed adjustment, the minister decision is not influenced by the number of comments received, by the contents attached to those written inputs, as well as the range of actual and potential economic impacts. This increase will serve as a starting point, not only to cushion the economic blow sustained by the most vulnerable of workers, particularly the farm laborers and domestic workers, but will grant them a dignity of acknowledging the, the value in society. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. I, I, I didn't want to, to, to disturb you because one, it's your maiden invitation uh, in the portfolio committee. And, uh, and to the practice and the norm has always been that uh, it's the department that makes a, a presentation. Yours as the chair was, was to give us an overview, but there's no train match. it's fine. I think uh, the, the, the DG, Mr. Mkalipi, will then come in if there anything, if if is there anything they want to add now, they can add. If it's none, if there is none, we will then. Uh, if there is none, we then uh, I will then allow members to ask questions. Uh, DJ and, and Mr. Mkalip, is there anything that you want to add? DJ, are you still around? Yes, chair. No, chair. I think the chairperson has covered uh, everything. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much again, Professor. Thank you very much. And also when, when questions are being asked, you will also jot them down. This is how we do it so that you members will ask questions, all of them. Then when we are done with that process of, 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 of asking questions, then you will come back yourself as the as the chairperson of the commission and the department to respond on all the questions. So it's not one question, one answer. So I will allow all members, members will indicate who want to ask questions and then allow them to ask those questions. I, I, I hope you will still be there and I hope you, you, you are following the, 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 the process. Honorable members, there yes, is- Yes, me. Michael Carter. Michael Bagram. Just, just hold on, hold on. Honorable, Honorable Cardo. Honorable Bagram. Mkondo. Honorable Mkondo. Dana, please, Chair. Honorable Dana. Dana. 
और बुढ़ी नाना अदा क्वेश्चन ओके आई विल देन बी द लास्ट और अब रिकार्डो ओवर टू यू uh thank you chair and thanks to uh, the professor for the presentation uh i have a couple of questions firstly how can you say with absolute certainty that the national minimum wage has not led to job losses we know that before the national minimum wage was introduced treasury estimated that it could lead to 750000 job losses and we also know from the quarterly labor force survey released yesterday that over 1.4 million people lost their jobs between the fourth quarter of 2019 and the fourth quarter of 2020 and that's not um all attributable to the covid-19 pandemic and the lockdown so i'd like to find out from you exactly <coughs> how you can say with certitude that the national minimum wage has not had disemployment effects then secondly we know that two of the sectors that are able to absorb unskilled labor at scale and therefore reduce the unemployment rate in south africa of domestic service and agricultural sectors yet the minimum wages for domestic workers and farm workers have been increased by 23% and 16% respectively which is far above inflation you mentioned in passing uh, that the agricultural unions objected to this and we've seen since the announcement of the increases that farmers are up in arms they're talking about increased mechanization which will result in even greater job losses in the agricultural sector can you explain to us exactly how you see this increase in the agricultural sector in particular but also the domestic service sector in light of the uh data that came out of the quarterly labor force survey yesterday how do you see these increases being sustainable especially in light of the fact that the government itself uh, had to renege on the three year wage agreement that it had entered into with public servants why should you know private sector employers be any different um it's going to put just as much strain on them these increases and then thirdly one of the reasons that you mentioned in your presentation for the introduction of the national minimum wage is to serve the broader policy objectives of reducing poverty and inequality and i suppose the thinking there is that you are through the national minimum wage stimulating demand among lower income households who save less of their income and who consume primarily local goods and services and that overall this is going to have the effect of increasing aggregate demand and facilitating growth but can we really say that we are seeing this happen in sa in terms of uh the stimulation of growth and then my final question of the 1520 written submissions that you received from stakeholders around the country what was the breakdown in numbers of submissions by employers and employees i note in your final slide that you say that it's not the number of submissions that matter but the content which i suppose is ultimately a subjective judgment uh but that said how many of these 1520 written submissions were actually in favor of above inflation increases in the domestic service sector and agricultural sector in particular i thank you chair thank you very much abul begram thank you chair i appreciate it and thank you to the professor for the report it's uh, it's, it's interesting i've got a couple of things first of all epwp um you say you have to wait for a specific instruction from the minister well obviously you're not going to get a specific instruction from the minister because government doesn't want to pay employees any more than what they have to and i think it's pretty rich and i'd like your comment on it that government says they can't afford to pay more than 12 rand it's 11 rand 42 or something uh but yes employers in the private sector they have to it, it sounds really particularly weird that's the first thing the second thing is you spoke about compliance and you said uh, compliance within the farming sector agricultural sector was pretty good but what you didn't say is how much retrenchment took place 
In other words, it's all very well for a farmer to say, all right, I'll comply, but I need to reduce my wage bill by the percentage that it went up, so I'll just ask certain amount of people to leave, which is in fact what we're seeing, and we're seeing it right now. People are getting ready, and you see it in the agricultural sector. I know I've been experiencing it myself, that small-time farmers are in fact now pushing for retrenchment big time, and it's, it's something that you're going to have on your hands, a 0% increase, and in fact, a 0% wage. Um, people are going to earn 0 rand per month if they get retrenched. Uh, the report that was sent to the minister, that wasn't distributed, that report wasn't distributed by the minister to the public. And so the comments that you saw were without the report. Um, and I find that, that that's a bit odd. Don't you think that the report that you did should have been seen by people who wanted to comment? Um, you have to comment in midair, which, which creates a problem. Um, and I, I'm not sure how you can comment on that then. Um, you also spoke about informal workers. Well, obviously, informal workers, most of them don't get anything near a minimum wage, and it's impossible to monitor that. You never will. You also said small employers. Um, they, you, you expected them to face certain challenges, and you're saying you're hearing that already. But what we do know is the economists are telling us that it's the small employers that are creating, creating the jobs. Isn't this just a handbrake to job creation? So it's all it's very rich again to say, well, we haven't had all that much retrenchment within the small employers, but there's, there's no job creation. And so we're going to go backwards as we're seeing. Um, you are also telling us that the you can apply for exemption. I don't know if you've tried to apply for an exemption. It's a difficult process. The um, you need you almost need an auditor to help you with it. Can you imagine a small business trying to get this together to apply? I tried. Um, I've been practicing law for 35 years and I couldn't get it completely right uh, applying for that. And anyway, the exemption is only for 10%. Um, so some people are saying, well, it's just worth our while not to pay the minimum wage altogether and we'll wait to see an inspector. Well, you never see an inspector because there are just so few inspectors. We don't have money to employ inspectors in this country. You said the increase is a starting point, but we had about 40% unemployment. Okay, uh, just 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 for the the DM, I, I wanted to know why the CCMA is so hardly treated uh, when they are the body that looks after seventy percent of the workforce. Um, in other words, we've got laws, but we can't implement the laws because the CCMA is on its knees. And maybe the um, the DM can can comment on that. Uh, and also, we don't have many inspectors in this country. We can't we can't even monitor our minimum wage. Thank you. Honorable Nkonto. Uh, thanks, Chair. Good morning to you, uh, colleagues and uh, honorable members. The DM and her team, um, uh, Professor van der Waard. Uh, uh, Chair, um, I don't know whether I'm audible. I'm not, I'm not okay today. Um, you are audible. Okay, thanks, Chair. Uh, my first question, Chair, will be on the submissions. Um, um, I would love to know how, what was done to ensure that the affected employees uh, participate um, in the, in the uh, uh, making of submissions because most of the employees specifically domestic workers and farm workers are illiterate um, and they might not, even if they are illiterate, they might not have uh, the necessary um, a, 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 things to, 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 to do the, 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 the submissions. So my question is what, what was done to make sure that uh, they reach out to the employees because I think the fact that the submissions are few is because it's one part party that uh, did the submissions and the other parties maybe were not. Um, my second question will be on uh, the compliance since 2019. Um, are we able 
to monitor uh, compliance. That means, do we have uh, enough? I, I don't want to uh, make assumptions. I, I want the department to be the one that is telling us as to exactly, do we have the capacity to monitor compliance of a minimum wage um, in the whole country and in the sectors that are affected? The last question will be um, the, since 2019, do we, do we have any uh, empl employers that we found that um, are, not, are not complying? Uh, do we have a, a database of those? Um, and if we do, uh, what has been done um, uh, to them to ensure that um, they comply? Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mkondo, Honorable Dana. Thank you very much, Jay. Um, Jay, my, uh, many of my questions, especially with regards to the agricultural sector, has been asked, so I won't repeat myself and ask them again. I'd just like to know as well, um, and it seems the presentation has, has almost been prepared in answer to one of my written questions that I submitted last week, so I'm very grateful for that. But um, first of all, and let me start with the exemptions process. I'd like to know what the timeline is on an adjudication if there is an exemption request. Um, will exemption be granted in the meantime? For instance, will someone have exemption until the request has been adjudicated? Because we know that these processes can take a very long time. And as Mr. Bagram has, say, has mentioned, um, it, it can be quite a difficult process. Um, who will adjudicate these exemption requests? And um, ultimately, who will decide? If, if we could just get an explanation on the process, I would appreciate that. And then um, also with regards to the EPWP, uh, the chairperson of the Minimum Wage Commission uh, mentioned that a request must be submitted by the minister with regards to the EPWP workers. And um, I, I know that there's a, there's a sentiment among the majority of the committee members that I've picked up that um, some, some parties want a starvation wage to be paid, and that is absolutely not the case. But um, there, are, there are people that physically cannot afford this minimum wage. So I'd like to know how the state can ju justify paying a starvation wage because ultimately 11 rand an hour equates to a starvation wage, if you ask me. And um, yes, Chair, I think that would be my questions for now. I will listen to the answers and then maybe if you will allow a second round, um, I will ask then again. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Chairperson, thank you very much and uh, greeting to all the colleagues and the official present. Chairperson, my question is based on, on, on the presentation that the, the promulgation of this national minimum wage was uh, in response to curtail or to combat poverty, unemployment and inequality. But the question that I want the, the, the presenter to, to clarify to us is that how would the affected sectors, which is agricultural sector and the domestic workers, been engaged in how to deal with this issue in order to achieve the main objectives? The reason I am raising this, Chaperson, is that wherever you go around South Africa, whether you are in the Western Cape, whether you are in Lubombo, Eastern Cape, those sectors are the most vulnerable and exploited people. They don't have any security of anything. If in the if in the in the agricultural sectors, people die, they are kicked out and left alone on the roads, and people go as far up until retirement without anything as the foundation in order to to continue with their lives. So this promulgation, therefore, was supposed to in order to restore the dignity of those people. The question is, do you have the mechanism to monitor that in terms of this regulation, this promulgation is implemented to protect those sectors? The second question, Chaperson, is 
Yes, I understand that the the presenter said that the the small scale farmers uh, can apply for the exemption, uh, not to pay for 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 the national minimum wage, but there are big industries who are also having a problem. The Agbiz CEO John Purchase has opposed this minimum wage, saying that they are going to increase the the prices and are going to affect the job security. The question, therefore, is that how did those sectors been engaged, especially the big ones that have opposed this? Because there is no way that we cannot have such big sectors playing this significant role of producing and security that we do have food, and yet there are those complaints. What is it that is being in, in, done in order to have those people be on board? Because the implementation of the minimum wage is needed, but on the other side, how do you get those people be on board as well? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, honorable members. Mine will be a, a, a question which may be bothering in, in repeating what has been asked, but I want to ask this question within the context, just simply that it is a known fact, Professor, that uh, domestic and farm and farming sector are privately owned. It depends on me to open the door for an inspector who wants to come and and ask questions from the worker. It's only, it it depends on me if I want want him or her to respond now. And it also, there's also a high level of intimidation in these sectors that we know, which then makes a bit scared to 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 be interviewed or to respond uh, to whoever is here to come and and check if then the minimum wage is then being implemented in the presentations that you have received and should I then say did the commission take into account this. Yes, we can't have an inspector for each and every household in South Africa and each and every farm, but it's a known fact that these sectors are vulnerable sectors, level of intimidation, at some point being politicized for that matter. And our people will, will be afraid to speak because a person will say, a half a loaf of bread is better than nothing, and therefore will be scared to then say, no, I'm, 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 I'm still getting 1.5 a month. Have you, have you looked into this, or you have, you, have, you have then said maybe it will be, or you think that it will then be the responsibility of the department? Exactly, it's about the, 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 the sector is, is privately owned, and how then, what will be the measures do we have as a country through the national, through the Department of Health, I'm, I'm sorry, of employment and labor, have that ability and a capacity? Because it can only be the re- responsibility of government. It's also the responsibility of everyone, including the employers. But we know for a fact that employers in this sector, are, are, some of them, are not really uh, 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 sensitive and sympathetic to workers. That is a that is a situation that we can't run away from. So that that that's why my my my, my question, which is more its comment and and, and yeah, I I, I I thought I I I need to raise this because it's quite a challenging situation. In, around this, as Honorable Mkondo has said, and Honorable Linan, some of these people are, are just put out, are, are thrown outside because employers are not, are not, are not, are not prepared. And in those, uh, maybe the department, when they be doing their enforcement, 
who then have been should be told in terms of the farm workers in particular, which culprits, who are those culprits in terms of race, was quite run away from that, in terms of race, provinces and regions. Thank you very much. How, how we will then respond, if the department wants to respond first, it's fine. If you want to respond first, it's okay, because our questions, majority of them, are, are more both to, for, to the commission and to, to, to the department. Thank you very much. Over to Tessa. Yes, um, Honorable Chairperson, I believe that um, procedure for the department to respond first and then for me to make okay. a, a comment as if they responded. I really um, beg your pardon. I didn't know that that uh, when I was called in that, that I should not make the presentation. But no, no, no. no, Prof, don't, don't, don't. It's a, it's, don't, it's, don't worry. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Did you? Thank you very much, Chair. Um, just uh, questions, and uh, Mr. Mkalip and Prof will then uh, uh, also respond. <clears throat> Mostly, um, the, there's a question that was raised by uh, Honorable Pakraim on the on the exemption, which was also raised by um, Honorable Dana. Um, I think uh, Mr. Mkalipi will respond uh, to that because when we when we developed this exemption system, we took all these things into account um, in, in not operating the system um, and the time that it will take um, in terms of the adjudication um, and all that. Those were factored in the development of the system. It actually um, it, it doesn't take more than a day um, you, you, because you do it yourself. There's no one, there's no person who's sitting behind and the system has been, progr has been programmed in such a way that you're able to get the results of that uh, immediately. But the, the nitty gritties of that, uh, Mr. Mkalipi will, uh, will, will deal with that. But I just wanted to, to highlight that. Why is the system A badly treated by the department? The system A is not badly treated by the department. In fact, um, I mean, I've been, I've been making this point uh, over and over again, Chairperson, that the budget cuts affected not only the Department of Employment and Labor, but the entire, uh, all the government departments. In our department, CCMA was the least affected um, entity. And simply because we, we tried our best to cushion it, um, I mean, given the, the, the important work that CCMA is doing, we needed to make sure that they, they do not feel um, the pinch compared to other um, entities that, that experienced exactly the same, uh, the same cuts. So it, it's not a question of uh, treating the CCMA badly. It's the question of um, allocating the limited resources that have been given to you um, in such a way that um, all the entities of the department are able to, to function optim optimally. And the reality is that there are things that we will need to cut, things that are nice things to, to have, so that we can focus on the service delivery, um, you know, uh, issues. Um, so, so all of us are called to do that, including the, the the CCMA. And where it's possible as a department, we are able to assist the, um, the CCMA. Honorable Mkondo raised the issue about um, if we, if the commission and the department. Uh, um, we are both able to monitor compliance in the whole and sectors that are affected. Yes, we are. We are able to, um, to, to do that. And that's why Prof in his presentation was able to indicate that um, much as we have a lot of noise about 
the farming sector. In actual fact, in terms of compliance, uh, based on the inspections that we've done and the research that was done, the farming sector is actually the most complying um, uh, sector. In fact, of the complaints that we've received as a department, only 3% are attributed to the, to the, farming, to the farming sector. In term, and even the, the claims, the complaints that we received where we recovered monies uh, from, the, the, from the different sectors, um, agri-sector agri constitute just 3% of that. And by the way, we collected just over 105 million um, for the whole of uh, uh, last year, it's 105 million. And we did, we conducted 228,000 inspections. And of those um, 217,000 uh, uh, workplaces complied and only 10,444 did not comply. And of those, just to respond to the left question, what happens to, uh, to these companies that are not complying, uh, 10,380, seven of them were issued with the, the statutory notices um, that uh, inspectors are, are expected to issue when there's a non-compliance. And of course, there's a process that follows after that because um, when companies don't comply with the notices that have been issued, then um, the prosecution uh, process follows. Um, so that's, that's, that's what happened. And yes, we do have a database of the employers who are not, who have not been complying. And, um, and in instances where they were issued with the notices and they did not honor those notices, um, they were then uh, referred to, to, to court. Um, the, the Honorable Baikra made this point um, that we do not have the, the inspectors um, and, and therefore it, it, it's very difficult to monitor compliance, especially in the informal sector. I mean, that's a fact uh, that we don't have enough inspectors. And chances are that we will not have um, enough inspectors given the competing um, priorities that the country um, has. But if you look at the principle of all our labor market policies, they are all based on the principle of uh, self-regulation. Um, now you expect that a person who runs a business will be honorable enough to comply with the laws of the country and treat uh, his or her workers um, with respect and have the duty of care. And that's what we, we expect. Um, we don't expect that we will have a, an inspector that will go to all the companies that we have in this country. Uh, and by the way, that principle of a duty of, I mean, the principle of um, self-regulation is the one that business um, fought for, that the legislation should not be prescriptive and that companies should be given space to, um, you know, uh, to, to self-regulate. Um, and, and, and over the years, this has proven to be very, very difficult um, because of the, the higher rate of, um, of non-compliance. Non and when you change the legislation to factor that, you're also going to be accused of, um, you know, treating business with, uh, uh, you know, with disdain um, in the sense that you're not allowing them space to, uh, to self-regulate. So um, as much as we go out and do inspections, we, given the limited resources that we have, we, we cannot be everywhere. And I think that's, that covers the question raised by Honorable Inanna on the, the mechanisms to protect the vulnerable workers. Is a responsibility of the department, not the commission, um, to do so. And on a regular basis, um, we come to the committee, we say to the committee, here's our annual performance plan. 
And these are the number of inspector, inspections that we're going to do over a given period of time. And, and, and that's the mechanism that we use. We, we have uh, different kinds of inspections, proactive inspections, reactive inspection, and we have uh, blitz inspections where we, you know, we go to areas that ordinarily would have uh, access to or would be able to reach given the limited numbers of inspectors that we have. Um, so so we, 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 we have a system where we, we, we protect the vulnerable uh, workers in the different sectors. And people can phone in and complain and they will not, they, are, they will be treated as anonymous and they will not be exposed. And this system has worked over, um, over a number of years. The chairperson on the issue relating to domestic and farm sector, um, it, it's, a, it's a fact that the relationship between the farm workers and the domestic, farm workers, domestic workers and their employers to a larger extent tend, tends to be a, a very paternalistic kind of a relationship. Now, which makes it very, very difficult for especially domestic workers to report um, non-compliance uh, to, the, to the department and which therefore makes it very difficult even in instances where they have reported for an inspector to go to a work, to go to um, uh, to the workplace. Given the fact that uh, domestic workers will be under strict instructions that they should not open um, for, for 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 anyone unless they've been, you know, um, instructed by the employer to open so that an inspector can have access. Nevertheless, our inspectors do go out and uh, and conduct these inspections because. We have the law that protects us that an inspector can go to any uh, workplace and inspect it. Um, and in instances where we have been denied access to workplaces, we have used the services of the South African police uh, services to, to assist us to have access uh, to, those, um, to those areas. And we do work with uh, um, stakeholders such as AgriSA and others, um, you know, to make sure that uh, we, we improve the relationship between farm workers and farmers. And also um, there's a much more better um, compliance with the, with the legislation um, in, this, in, the, in the different sectors. So I'll, I'll, I'll allow Mr. Mkali to just wrap up a few things and then Prof will then deal with the work that the commission is doing. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, TG. Mr. Mkalipi. Thank you, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Honorable Members and, and the DG. Um, the, I think the first questions that I'm going to deal with are the question asked by Honorable uh, Cardo. Uh, the first question that he's asking is, how can uh, the Commission say uh, the, the, there were no job losses when State South Africa, the report indicate that there were job losses since 20, 2019 or even 2018. Uh, now, the issue is this, uh, Honorable Cardo, that State South Africa says there were job losses, but State South Africa doesn't say that those job losses are as a result of uh, the national minimum wage or anything. They just give the statistics on what uh, the state of the labor market is. The research that we did specifically look at what was the effect of the national minimum wage. Now, we can't go through the whole research. I mean, if honorable members want to read the research, uh, it's available on our website. We can submit it to the committee for them to look why the research reached that conclusion that says, yes, the research doesn't say there's been no job losses. The research says those job losses are not as a result of the national minimum wage. There are many factors that influence employment, even the rate of, 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 of the rent, if the rent competes negatively against uh, the dollar, it increases petrol and, and, and other, and other, and other uh, uh, effect uh, affecting uh, the labor market. Therefore, our research, as, we, as the chairs indicated, only says, yes, there's been job losses in the labor market, but those job losses cannot be attributed to the national minimum wage. That's what the research says. 
Now we can't choose uh, to accept part of the research and not the, the other part of the research. If we don't like the result of the research, uh, and we can come up with another research that shows differently to that. Now, the next question that uh, Honorable Kat also linked to this is, can you, can you explain how do we, uh, the increases, uh, uh, whether they are manageable by different companies, uh, com companies would be able to manage with these increases? As the chair has indicated, the exemption process is there precisely to, to, to deal with those issues. For those companies who think that the increases are not sustainable, uh, they are not able to uh, 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 pay them, uh, they should be able to apply for exemption. If their case, if they can make their case, they should be able to get those ex exemption. Does the increase that we've given stimulate uh, <clears throat> the growth? Well, economics tell us all that when you stimulate uh, uh, you give uh, stimulate demand. If you want to stimulate uh, the demand, you give disposable income to many people. It should it should lead to uh, growth in employment and growth to the <coughs> to the economy. But obviously, you can't look at that on its own. There are other issues. If uh, other issues affect it, the price of power, the price of water, and other issues that comes into it, you might do well in this area or certain sectors that operate in that sector, the retails and, and, and others that benefit when you increase your, 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 your grants, you increase your minimum wage, might be doing well. Therefore, we might have to look at how did uh, ShopRite, uh, how did uh, uh, other companies, big and pay over, uh, perform during that period? Whether did that stimulate economic growth in those sectors, but that's not the end of it all. There, as I said, there are other areas that affect economic growth. The next question that was asked was, um, what is the breakdown of uh, the comment that we've received? There's no doubt that if you look at the numbers, the majority of the people who, are comment, who have commented in terms of the paper are people who are saying, no, the increase is not sustainable. But the question that we're asking, if, you look on the quality of the submission, then look at how do you calculate uh, the, the federation, COSATO, uh, FEDUSA, NATU, and, and, and the South to comment it. Now, do you, do you count them as one? Remember, they represent more than 2 million workers. How do you calculate? Now, when you've got comments from companies, a thousand companies, and comments from all the federations saying one thing, if we are gonna be looking at the numbers, how do you then take that comment? And, and, and then those are the issues that are facing the commission, that are facing the minister, that are facing any policy, uh, a person who must make decision on the basis of pu public comment. And from where we sitting, we say, if we're gonna be looking purely on the numbers, then we should be able to say, the comments made by the four federation in terms of numbers, remember we said we've received 1,500, uh, uh, comments. Now, if you dissect the comment from the Federation, they represent 2 million workers. They, call, they speak on behalf of 2 million workers. Now, sh why shouldn't we regard that as 2 million people making comments? I mean, if, if the honorable member can help us with that and, 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 and justify that we should disregard the 2 million that are behind the, 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 the names of the people who are commenting on this issue. That's why uh, we're saying when you consider comment, you don't only look at the paper that is in front of you. You look at also the people that behind the paper. You look on the comment itself and you look at how does this advance uh, 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 government policy. On, on the issue of uh, uh, exemptions, uh, maybe the, the chair uh, should ask the department to come here and give a report of how, what has happened with the exemption over the last year. How many companies have applied for exemption? What was the duration uh, uh, of the, the, the time frame in them uh, getting a response on, 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 on the exemption? Our exemption system work exactly the same way as the tax system. I hope all of us pay tax here. I hope all of us separation to the tax men on an annual basis. Now, if you submit all the information uh, to SARS 
you get a response immediately. Either the report that says uh, there's money due to you, or a response that says uh, you must pay SARS, or a response that says your assessment has been sent in for further investigation. That's how our system works. If an employer submits all the information uh, and, and the system at, uh, 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 look at the information because it's done uh, uh, Natsika, in terms of the system, there's a computer system that does the calculation. Now, if you submit everything, I can't speak about employers who apply for exemption and who do not want to submit financial information. If you say you cannot afford, you should be able to submit uh, 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 your financial statement showing that you cannot afford so that the system can do the necessary calculation. Now, if you submit that information within 10 minutes, you get a response. If your information is up to scratch, within 10 minutes, you've got a response. You've got a letter that says, uh, this is uh, uh, your exemption. And, 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 and we are confident that for those employers who have submitted correct information, whose application has not been sent in for audit, have received even the audit in terms of the regulation, there's a time, there are time frame put it for those that are put on audit. Uh, by when should the department finalize the audit that is put in? All that depending on the whether the employers who, who's applying has supplied uh, the information, the correct information. Um, on the issue of EPWP, uh, let's we need to talk about this. First, the commission can only do what the law allows them to do. Now, this law was debated at NetLeg. It was agreed at NetLeg with a very long debate on how to treat EPWP. All parties at NetLeg, business, labor, government, and community agreed how to treat EPWP. It's in the law. Any uh, uh, honorable member in this committee who want to change the law so that EPWP to be treated differently, they can do that because the law, uh, and the law states clearly that if within two years, the wages of workers in domestic and farm should be uh, equalized within a period of two years. It doesn't say the same with EPWP. It doesn't say the same with leadership. And, 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 and uh, members should not only take EWP, even leadership. Also, the other thing that we need to put it, government pay, employ more than a million workers in this country, and it pay far above the minimum wage. Therefore, this argument that government is not prepared to comply to pay the minimum wage is not correct. Because for those employers, employees that are employed directly by government, they get paid far more than the minimum wage. And, and, and therefore, as an employer, government pay the minimum wage. If we want to change the law so that EWP should be treated the same as domestic and, 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 and farm workers, we, the, the avenues are out, are available for the department, they're available for members of parliament, they are available for this committee in changing the law. But as it is, the commission and the department can only implement the law and the PWP wages were increased on the same rate that the minimum wage was increasing. The minimum wage was increased with uh, 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 CPI plus 1.5, and EWP was also increased on, the, on, those, on, those, on those basis. Now, as I've said that it just doesn't make sense to criticize government, that government is not prepared to pay the minimum wage that is being paid by private sector. Government paid far, far above that, the minimum wage that is being paid. Uh, 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 that is being regulated. Um, DJ, I think I've dealt with um, uh, uh, all the issues. I mean, Honorable, Honorable Yinana asked a question on um, how will we be engaging with the affected sectors uh, who are not able to, uh, 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 who are affected by this legislation in order to make sure that the ob objective of the law are met. Uh, well, the issues of communication, uh, it, it's for us as a department and our stakeholders to go out there and make sure that the parties and, and especially the vulnerable workers are aware what their rights are so that they can also be able to exercise uh, uh, those rights with them. And, 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 and those are the processes that 
uh, we as a department will be putting in place. I'm sure there will be uh, 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 <clears throat> advocacy done around uh, the 1st of March in terms of this minimum wage in order to make sure that uh, all parties affected are uh, able to uh, 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 come to the party on this. And on this issue of exemption also that Honorable has asked, exemption is not only for small business, it's for any business that cannot afford, whether it's big or small, all business can make an application if they cannot afford the minimum wage, as long as they submit uh, the, the information that uh, uh, is required for the system to adjudicate that. There's no person that is sitting in the department uh, adjudicating exemption, except those that are sent for uh, uh, audit. Only those that are sent for audit that then you need a human being to look at the information and deal and deal with it. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, Ted. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. 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 Mkalipi. Uh, Prof? Yes, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, I think most of the issues have been covered. In, in any event, many of the questions related to, to issues that the department um, deal with and not the commission. I'll just make a few comments. Um, uh, Mr. Nkalipi actually covered the issue of research. So the, the research um, outcome was from the Development Policy Research Unit of UCT, um, led by Professor Arun Bharat. It's a very reputable research institute, and it is available. So, so we didn't. We based our decision. The commission based its decision uh, on on the uh, on the research output, and the, and the research for the commission will be ongoing. So, come to the to the the second point. So, the the effect of the national minimum wage and the increases in the minimum wage um, will be continue to be monitored. And um, well, well the, the effect of it will be, be monitored on an ongoing basis through this year and the next and and the, the next. I can say that the, the, the significant percentage increase for farm and domestic workers came about following a difficult debates um, at the at the commission. Um, it is a policy imperative to equalize. Um, it's now since 2029, 2020, 2021. Um, and the intention um, was to equalize, um, as, as the, the minority report indicates, you could also read that from, from the business members, um, they cautioned against um, giving uh, a, a percentage increase of, of such a high percentage increase in, in this year. But in the end, the structure, as I indicated, of the commission is that there the are 12 commission members with, with votes, and in the end, there was some bargaining that occurred and that was that was the outcome at the commission. Um, the, I won't talk about the exemptions. That's not really within our domain, except that it can cushion the effect of all employers who cannot pay. Mr. Mkalipi dealt with the EPWP issue, as I indicated. I I merely indicated that we had no, um, we really have no authority to entertain the 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 level like we have uh, had a, a, a statutory. Uh, imperative to entertain the farm and domestic workers. Um, then there was a, a suggestion that comments were made in, uh, not based on a report. The report was published um, in December and there was at least a month or more given to, to parties, to any, any interested person or parties or members of, of the public to, to comment of it, uh, on the report. So the report was available. Um, so I don't know where the suggestion came that the report was a point made by another honorable commissioner, and that is that the report was published in the government gazette and there were written representations, um, the opportunity was given for written representations, um, and that um, uh, in future, we, sh uh, I take the point that the commission should entertain the possibility of, of having um, representations from, from persons face-to-face -face or mask-to-mask -mask then, um, because of the fact that vulnerable, vulnerable em employees like farm workers and domestic workers and other vulnerable employees would not have had the, the opportunity to make representations to the commission because of the nature that it was in the Governor Gazette and it's all written representations. There were rep uh, several rep representations from, from NGOs representing 
the the vulnerable that we included in the in the representations. But I take the point that um, the the commissioners uh, at the commission's report should be taken to the to the people and to all people in in South Africa. Um, but I think that that's my last comment in regard to to the commission's work. Thank you. No, thank you, thank you very much, uh, 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 Prof. And, and the department and, and and members. And I I I want to 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 just uh, to reflect that uh, there there is an information that we need. Honourable Mkalipi did circulate the, the, the as much as in the, is in the website. But uh, they will circulate the research uh, document to the to ourselves, so that we do have we do have them. We do have that research. It is it is a it's a debate which is quite emotive in its nature. But it's a debate. Members of parliament, ourselves obviously driven by, by the positions of our, of, of our political parties and the ideology behind that. But in the center, we have got a response that if we are to interact with, with people that have been given a responsibility, in this case, the commission, that we interact with them, ask these difficult questions and ask them with an understanding with an understanding that we are a country like any other country. And I don't think at times, yes, we are comfortable, we are uncomfortable, pardon me, we're uncomfortable about the number of inspectors that we are having in the country. And, and, and as I want to repeat, there's no country that has got an inspector for each and every household and for each and every uh, a, 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 a farm. I'm making an example about those. But everybody has got a responsibility. I have got a responsibility in my household that I ensure that my, my helper benefits from this. You have got a responsibility as a farmer. And therefore, it starts with us, with our, if I can say, with our tribe, with our family with our friends to ensure that they do what then the law is saying. Because if we keep quiet and we pretend as if government is not doing anything, when in fact ourselves are not doing anything, we will be judged very harsh by this with the challenges that are there in the country in terms of, 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 of fiscals and a number of things. So that's why I'm saying it's an emotional, it's an emotional debate, it's an emotive subject, but together we must then, when we leave this term at the end of 2024, we must then begin to say we think we have managed to 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 do ABCD for the benefit of the ordinary people in this country. I'm happy that the DG did. What then, what then becomes, what is the responsibility? I'm sorry, the relationship that you have with, 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 with stakeholders like where well, the trade union of what, agri, agri, uh, uh, agricultural forums that are there. So as we are conducting our, when we do our constituency work, honorable members, we will have to expose some of these things, irrespective. The second issue that I would request that the department assist us with is that as they are where they are uh, conducting inspections, we must have a, an audit of these farms and, and these, these domestic workers also in terms of, 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 of age, in terms of gender, and in terms of race, so that we, we correct if we say we want to correct, if we say we want to have a country and have people who feel comfortable, who feel addressed, 
by, by laws and, and systems that are there, who will have to expose those who are not doing, who are not applying the laws that are there because they are people that perished and, and in them perishing is because they were they they they, were, they struggled for this country to have some of these laws. They may not be perfect to some, but I I I do think that we have got a responsibility. And I want to thank the members. It's not going to be the last interaction that we're having as we are doing our work. We'll then have to see where to to. to come if we were to, to, to invite the commissioners to just take us to ask these difficult questions. But honorable members, when we do our constituency work, let's expose this with, with the dignity. Obviously, we can't, we can't have a hostile, create a hostile and, and an arrogant um, environment. Ours is to create an environment which is going to enable an enabling environment for the benefit of our of our people and for the benefit of us to do our work in terms of conducting an oversight and ensuring that the department uh, 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 account. I want I want I want to to thank everyone. Uh, uh, we will we will meet. thank you very much, Prof. Feel don't feel uncomfortable. It's uh, maybe the terminology that we use, but I think it was. It was a, a a different setup. Don't 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 feel don't feel don't feel uh, uncomfortable, and be and be sorry about that. It, it, there was nothing wrong in what you did, but you have you have you have done very well, given that uh, it was your maiden visit uh, uh, to our committee. Thank you very much, honourable members, and please, the, the DG, please the information that you promised us. Can we have that uh, within seven days uh, so that we don't have an experience of with, with some of the entities that we ask for a, 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 an information and it will take long years until we have, we will have to call a, a committee for us to get that information. But uh, thank you very much, honorable members. We are going to have a sitting which is then going to uh, reflect on some of the things and the country, everybody is eager to, to hear what the Minister of Finance is going to say to the country and the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. You better take your wallet with you to the hearing this afternoon. Thank Come you, again. Chair. Thank you, honourable members. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have fun. Bye, -bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, Bye, Bye Chair. Chair. Bye, everyone.